folks and welcome to another video lecture that introduces another capability of cells. Now let me ask you, do cells in a multicellular organism communicate? The cells inside of you, do they have some way of talking to one another? Are individual bacteria living in a colony capable of communicating with each other? The quick answer to that is yes. Communication is a way that organisms use to increase the survival of their species. This video is part one of how cells communicate. Organisms have evolved many ways of communicating with one another. Have you ever seen schools of fish responding as if they were one organism? Like the school of fish evading predators around them. They seem to be communicating to coordinate their motion. Or how about these birds swarming like these starling flocks, all seeming, seeming to fly in synchrony? This type of coordination happens at the cellular level as well. And it's not just a characteristic of higher organisms. It was invented by very simple prokaryotic cells, probably billions of years ago. The mechanisms that simple organisms use for cell-to-cell -cell communication are very similar to the way your cells and the cells of other complex organisms use to communicate with one another. The process is simple. Often, an environmental stimulus is detected by a cell. The cell responds by secreting a signal chemical. A signaling chemical is called a ligand. The ligand is detected by way of receptors by target cells. These cells then respond in some way. Yeasts, my very favorite fungus, show intercellular communication when they prepare to mate. There are, of course, two sexes of yeasts alpha and beta. Alpha cells secrete alpha factor and have beta receptors on their surface. Beta cells secrete beta factor and have alpha cell receptors on their surface. This is all they go by to find each other. Once they recognize one another, they commence to shmoo. That's right, shmoo. That's what they call it when yeasts mate. They become one cell and the genetic material from each cell is combined into a diploid cell. It's a process of genetic mixing that we can talk about later. Bacteria have a way of communicating their condition too. Density response called quorum sensing that allows them to coordinate their behavior such as secreting chemicals that help change their environment. Other bacteria can sense when food is scarce and can collectively change into a form that allows them to survive long periods of time without food. These are all ways organisms can enhance their survival. The language these organisms and your cells use is in the form of chemical messages. Let's take a look at three ways that the cells use to communicate and I'll attempt to give an example of each. First, cells that are in direct contact can share information. Animal cells to the left here have gap junctions Plants have plasmodesmata, which are channel proteins that allow exchange of cytoplasmic chemicals between immediate neighboring cells. This is also the way that your white blood cells and your immune system do their job. But instead of swapping chemicals, the membrane proteins act as a signal receptor. The detection of a signal by a receptor causes changes in the receiving cell. Your white blood cells recognize foreign proteins called antigens in this way and act to destroy them. The antigen is the signaling molecule. More on this type of signaling pathway in a following video. The immune system is amazing in the different ways it carries out its functions. And cell-to-cell -cell communication is crucial to the proper functioning of your immune system and all the other systems of your body for that matter. Next. Cells that are near each other, but not in direct contact, also have a way of communication. Some cells communicate by secreting a chemical called a local regulator that only works at short distances. An example of this is when cells of the same tissue signal each other about when to divide. Neighboring cells secrete growth factor, a chemical signal that turns on the cell cycle of nearby cells. Nerve cells communicate in a similar fashion. The neurons in your brain are actually not physically connected, but communicate over short distances between neurons called synapses. Finally, cells in a multicellular organism can use long-distance signaling. 
This is exactly how the hormones from one endocrine gland work on distant cells in the body. Hormones are long distance signaling chemicals. However, only specific cells, called target cells, have the proper protein receptor on their surface to receive the chemical message. What you may not know is that all animals and even plants use hormones for long distance signaling. To summarize, cells have at least three ways to communicate. Through direct contact with neighboring cells, using gap junctions or plasmodesmata, or with surface proteins as in the immune system. Over short distances, using local regulators. The local regulators could be growth hormone or neurotransmitters between neurons in the brain or the nervous system. Or over long distances, as is the case with hormones in the endocrine system. The communication process starts a series of events for the receiving cell. These events are collectively called the signal transduction pathway. There are three steps, simply reception, transduction, and response. Reception of a chemical signal called a ligand. The ligand must be complementary to the receptor on the receiving cell. Like a key in a lock, this changes the conformation of the receptor, which triggers an internal response. Transduction involves a series of steps, usually involving a chain reaction of changing the conformation of several linked proteins. These changes end up creating some change in the cell activity called the response. Now the response can be the activation of an enzyme, changes in the cytoskeleton for the cell to move, or the activation of specific enzymes. Now that's enough for part one. In part two, I'll go into a little bit more detail about the signal transduction pathways and the many forms it can take. Now this can be quite complicated, so we'll discuss it a lot more in class. Think of a question that you might have for cell-to-cell -cell communication. Write it down and bring it to class, and we'll see you then. How neat is that? That's pretty neat.